Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I've got another got another Nate game. This was another game that I played off stream, just trying to get trying to get some good actual dedicated practice in and take the game a little bit more seriously. This is a TVT that I played on the European server. This uh, game took place at about 5,000 MMR. I think this guy was 5,000 MMR. I don't know. He's my opponent, by the way, in the bottom right. He is low, low clock, low clock, like heroes, low clock, like like his name is meant to say that it's hero time. I don't know. He's just a Morbius fan. He got the 4K Ultra Blu-ray, um, but he did not want the government to know that he bought it. So he gave the free digital code that came with it to a friend instead. Um, kind of tells you everything, everything you need to know. And his opponent in the top left, we ha have uh, the prophet of the void himself, Malzahar, who will be opting for the standard TVT opening. Gas first, barracks second gas. Pretty much everybody does this. This is like the I don't want to die to Reaper build. But on this map, you can actually block the only Reaper. This is the only place Reapers can go in or out. You can block this with a single engineering bay. You can block it with your barracks. You could build your opening barracks there if you just hate Reapers and you're willing to you're willing to make that awkward shuffle when you have to eventually relocate it. But it's a TVT. It's a TVT on Neo Humanity. Neo Humanity, I think mathematically speaking, has one of the shortest rush distances in the pool. Yet, since it has some of the more condensed bases and some of the more easy to secure expansions, it, it kind of finds itself being this map that has uh, a lot of crazy long games. You end up being able to split it due to the access of resources. You know, if you don't mind these gold patches, you have like a triangle of power here to protect your third and your natural. Makes it a little bit easier to get into those those like just slugfest matchups. I don't know. I, I actually really like Neo Humanity. I saw that the, the person who made this map was posting on SC Reddit. Somebody was asking about map vetoes and he's like, well, this map's terrible for Terran. The win rate on it is horrible. And all I could think to myself was that's strange because it's actually one of my favorite maps. So that maybe that's just because I'm a weird turtle type player. I love sea turtles. If I had to permanently be turned into an ocean animal, and just chill forever, I would like to be a sea turtle. I mean, technically they have to, they bury their eggs on the beach and technically they're born on the beach, but I'm gonna count, I'm gonna count that because that's, that's my truth. Anyway, looking forward here, our red Terran player opting for a quick reactor after the Marine. So Marine Reaper, very straightforward, even gets a bunker. So there's a little bit of concern there. Doesn't know what's coming his way. He did have that early scout. Malzahar, on the other hand, has not scouted on this side of the map. It's just a cyclone opening with mag field accelerator. So this just gives the cyclone an extra 50% damage against everything with its lock on. So it's kind of like you open up, you have a couple cyclones. You can deter most stuff. You see the barracks here. Reapers cannot go up or down from that position. So you block that point off. And now the only real way to get into your base is this, this point without, without air units, of course. So taking the early cyclones command center on the inside being safe makes a lot of sense. If you know, if you know me, or if you know anybody that likes to build lots of cyclones, you can be overwhelmed early on by reapers, by hellions. So those, those are the two, those are the two things that you're mostly concerned with in early game TVT if you do cyclone openings, because just numbers, sheer numbers can, can be an issue. So everything gets built inside the main. There's a wall off, just kind of keeps it tight. Um, for what it's worth, Malzahar, not a player that particularly enjoys getting cheesed. Um, so that, that kind of gimme where maybe he could have gone out on the map since there wasn't a Reaper opening, but he didn't know that. He didn't know that. He was he was fine to just chill and play defensive because he he probably just wants to get to his macro game. I'm I'm going to I'm going to assume. Um yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So with that being said, siege tank opening out of lock clock. Nothing nothing really unusual here. Raven tank, Marines, third CC. This is bread and butter Terran versus Terran. There's even the Viking to check in case a Liberator run by comes by. Lots of people on this map. You'll see a proxy starport here, proxy starport here, or here, or here, or here, or you get it. You get it. So, third command center is going to boot up for Mal's. And it's four Cyclones with a Raven 
on the way and then tanks to follow that up so it's four cyclone opener into siege tanks uh if you're wondering the origin of this opening this build maybe with few less turrets uh actually got this one from hero marines twitch stream really liked this opening the first time that they brought cyclones back into being a high damage unit um for for a while cyclones kind of existed in a different curse form but we won't talk about that because that was one of the most sad times of my life so the cyclones are going to move out with the raven there is a scan lock clock has seen okay sees the factories sees the natural sees the gas sees the third base does not see too much though and i think that was the bunker getting salvaged but mouths are going to try and get some chip shots off the bottom side and a barracks in production Ooh, that's that's painful this uh this little poke this little poke ends up being extremely annoying even the siege tank gets popped from below so you've got two ravens one dead siege tank and two in the natural but what's this oh i mean did you really need me to tell you this was happening there's a fusion core coming in two extra star ports and it looks like off the back of this damage I mean, the blue Terran, he knows. He knows. Like, Lock Lock is kind of stuck. He's he's not going to be able to get out of his base very easily. This is this is kind of a, a hard spot to be in because a lot of Terrans will go for this Raven Viking tank move out. But when you lose a couple of units early, it gets a whole lot harder to get out on the field. So maybe there's a choice as to when that third base comes in. I don't know. Battle cruisers are on the way. Um, Yeah, I don't know. Nope, nobody makes this unit. I've never heard of it before. I don't know what it does. So we're just going to find out in this game. And so will, so will Lock Lock as he scans. So he sees everything. He knows. I know. You know. We know. He, she, they know. And he wants to get out on the map. He wants to try and bring some pressure. No, he doesn't. He's going to turn around. He wants to take his third base. The Cyclones are still here, though. They're going to lock on to the command center. And not going to sacrifice themselves to the tanks, though. So they pulled back. Now, Malzahar having the option to try and pick some units off in the middle of the field here as he sees this attack coming in we do have a raven dropping some auto turrets for harass at the same time so things getting a little bit dicey cyclones will get picked off at the tower alongside the raven as these uh, scvs i mean i don't know he didn't look back to click them away because they just stood there and died but sometimes that happens there is one tank watching the front as uh yeah yeah we've got a planetary third don't ask about that when you're building battle cruisers you got you got to make do He's in range, but he doesn't have the vision. He's in range, but doesn't have the... Oh, okay. So we see what's going on over here. We've got Battlecruiser with five kills inside the main base. Running down that hill. Gets the Viking. Now, Marines without upgrades. They only do three damage per hit to a BC. So, and they don't have as much range. So it gets awkward fast. The first tank does get picked off. Another one in the back with some SCVs was ready to hold the door battle crews are going to make its way back inside of the main base has 76 health with 10 kills i think killing the viking and the ravens or killing the viking and the marines is nice but probably wanted to get a little bit more gas value out of it as uh, another wave of vikings finishes and kills that so battle cruiser kind of gets teleported into the other side of the map pulls everything home even though siege tanks went to the back of the mineral line and that buys a little time because mal's definitely took some damage there i mean this third base it's pretty secure what can uh, what can i say what can you say? what can anybody really say as three battle cruisers still being made at a time so we'll just we'll just have to follow the adventures of these battle cruisers and see what they get up to meanwhile lock lock he says to himself look i'm not about making long-term investments but today i'm tripling down calls on mules three command centers going up at his natural third base is already situated and he's kind of got a little bit of a dilemma He's building a lot of Vikings. He's moving into armories. He's getting starports. But, I mean, he opened the game with Stim. He's got 1-1. One, one. He has combat shields on the way. But there's no medevacs. There's not a lot of support for the bio. So, you gotta be careful running into that spot where you do not have anything to work with. Battlecruiser just kind of flies into it. Tanks the interference matrix on the way home. Interference matrix doesn't cancel teleport. Thank God. And, uh... These rocks blocking the mineral line from the backside are being whittled down. Fun fact, it's easy to mine off this base from the inside. And if you play Terran, you, you know, I know, etc. It works. Malzahar's going to try and take a couple of bases at a time, maybe expecting Laclock to be on the defensive. 
and the clock says i'm gonna take three bases at a time and he's being a little bit more direct about it mines out the gold for the backside base he's gonna take the purple haze base and the east side expansion one one coming in for the ship weapons and we've got yeah it's just seven marines being made at a time with the vikings so the marines are pretty much becoming fodder in this instance we have some scans gonna go down coming in from nathanius i mean malzahar you know that guy the incredibly handsome one in this game there's the scan onto the battle cruisers right as they're leaving the base but the whole air army is right here so this might catch them off guard do any of these guys get picked yes one does i cry every time cry every time i dedicated my arams last night to that battle cruiser i got singed and went uh four and 20. it was awesome we won of course so the battle cruisers are going to go for the backstab teleport deep inside the main base of la clock and there are three starports in range but i think he's just going to go for the scvs here is actually continuing to reinforce so it's kind of turning into a super yolo play the viking count has been thinned but there's there's still 10 of them so 10 vikings versus five battle cruisers i mean this was a huge commitment going inside for the infrastructure now trying to chase these vikings down and really seems like malzahar took what was what was turning into a potentially big snowball play and just beefs it just absolutely steps on a rake and you know what happens next the handle breaks his nose and we don't uh, we don't want to go to the er so we don't just have a broken nose for a little while not fun not fun one battle cruiser left that's it one battle cruiser and two tanks and a dream versus 28 marines 11 vikings and six siege tanks who do you guys think is going to come out on top here that's a mean question that's a mean question i'm sorry i apologize for that one these bases were still taken though the corner base got picked off at some point another command center going up towards the front but one thing that is beautiful this i think this is actually amazing i can't think of anything wrong with this sometimes it's hard to take that next base all right how do you deny this Battlecruiser almost gets caught. That one's just going to yeet in. So he didn't want to didn't want to play the defensive game there, trying to buy a little bit more time. So it is just the one Battlecruiser. That's a lot to lose, though. Let's take a look at the units lost this game because that BC is dead. Yeah, yeah, you're super dead, buddy. Give it up. Give up the ghost. You are donezo. Eight Battlecruisers have died and only 11 Vikings. At three Ravens and 47 Marines is something, but... That Viking count is continuing to become a problem. Low clock's going to siege up from the low ground, looking over towards that natural expansion and absolutely laying waste to the SCVs mining the gas. Vikings and Ravens over here. I think there might have been another little BC run by. As we look to see what is going on here. Battlecruiser is raining justice down from above onto the tanks. Taking a little while to chew through as a Viking does come over here and malzahar sitting with no upgrades just has yamato so these marines these marines with that one one it does extra damage but just imagine if he had gotten two two if he had, he could have three three marines by this point in the game and then i think the battle cruisers melt now that said the vikings are getting plus two so these vikings are really strong these vikings are really strong this is a really difficult situation to be in i i don't know how malzahar pulls this one out okay you've got 15 vikings and 56 marines versus three battle cruisers there's obviously no way there's obviously no way nathanius could possibly win this game so the tanks are outside of his base there's a huge line of marines he sieged up the inside of the purple haze base now there's a yamato onto the onto that specific siege tank so okay so take out the tanks deny the siege potential and the vikings they can't really play they can't really fly into the turrets while the bcs are there so i get it i get it i i can see this flowing together this base on the west side just goes completely uncontested i think if the bio moves to this base and he shuts this down maybe that's where it starts to turn but that's a building armor planetary which is you know if we're going to talk about upgrades i'm just going to say it again the marines only have one one which means that the building armor planetary is dummy thick against them three three marines can fight a building armor planetary but one one marines no no scans are going down he's looking wants to see okay just looking inside of that base 
looking inside of that base battle cruisers are going to break the rocks and then absolutely get jumped on by these vikings one of them does get sniped teleports back behind the shroud and miles Zahar throwing the deep ball uh this is, this is what we call a lateral play in in american football it's when you just throw the ball up in the air behind you and scream really loudly and hope that the opposing team lets you win on the final play it has a two percent win rate and usually generates a highlight that will get played on ESPN for at least three to four years. So let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Let's see if we get something butt fumble worthy or not. Well, Clock's army. He's so close. He's not at the tower. Actually, he's he's already seen this, apparently. He knows. So trying to siege up on the inside of this base while the west side expansion was secured definitely makes things tricky. There's there's still an unsaturated geyser. Bueller. Bueller. So he finds this base when we talked about it. I mean, he already had vision. Apparently you can see those Marines don't really do damage that quickly. And that's just a regular command center. It's not even a planetary. Planetaries have five armor when you get that upgrade. Regular command centers only have three. So some missile turrets are going up in the middle of the map. Low clock is starting to realize that his unupgraded bio is actually not strong enough to punch through the heavily fortified defenses of his foe. He does have a huge upgrade lead. Malzahar finally gets 1-1 at the 16 minute mark on the dot, uh, but that's that's not really enough. That's not really enough. These Vikings are currently 2-2. They're very powerful. There's a Dorito cannon. So he's, he comes in, Yamato's the command center and then just teleports back. Yamato's the command center. He teleports back, back behind behind the great wall of, of Scranton, Pennsylvania. Um, does he know about this base in the bottom left? Yes. Yeah, so he sees this from the watchtower finally. But look, the Marines are only 1-1. One, one. Guys, they're only one. The, plant, the, the planetary fortress is like, don't, dude, come at me, bro. I got you. I got you. I'm about to melt this whole army. It's about to be like a hot pocket that you accidentally microwave for seven minutes. So now the Vikings are going to land. Should be able to smite this base. Vikings do a lot of damage against mechanical planetary looks like it was target fired onto the marines there popped about half of them not too shabby so look clock has done what he's needed to look at the bank he's this dude has he's got four thousand minerals and four thousand gas i'm just saying he's got so much money he should just start loaning them out to people in other ranked games of starcraft and make him make him more off the interest because he certainly doesn't need all of it for this game meanwhile malzahar has accrued a non-zero number of battle cruisers 15 15 bcs on the map not too shabby and his tutu is finally coming in so it looks like scvs are going to get thrown away here a lot of scans getting dropped what's going on what are you up to hey there hi there hello there hello there etc so tutu on the bio it begins at 17 and a half minutes at 17 and a half minutes plus two attack for the marines finally starts I think there are a couple of fights that could have turned quite a bit if uh, if the upgrades continued throughout the entire game. So battle cruisers are going to swing around the right side. They're actually going to run into those unupgraded Marines and look how little damage they do with their puny guns. Hmm. Sorry, what? Yeah, in the bottom left. Oh, there's more. There's more battle cruisers um, headed towards this planetary fortress so he's got a bunch of marines to try and defend it but this is about eight battle cruisers which should one shot and yep there you go all oh, the planetary has gone bc's teleport back on the right side these guys are actually still alive by the way these did not get killed the vikings are on the complete opposite side of the map so it's turned into it's kind of like an acme you know just like running through the walls or whatever paintings but then it's not real when you try to go through it i don't know I don't know. Oh, there you go. There you go. The mineral steel. Ladies and gentlemen, 25 minerals from each of these patches. Oh, the command center block. Are you kidding me? Wow. Wow. The disrespect. The disrespect. I used to be a big fan of you, Malzahar. Then you blocked somebody's command center with a mule. And now, now I don't support you making people's heads explode from visions of the world ending. That's a that's a premium League of Legends meme. I'm sorry. Only Nathan only Nathanius subscribers can actually understand that joke. My apologies. A lot of Vikings on the east side. Two two for the bio is done. I'm just gonna clap. Everybody clap. Hooray! We did it. We got there. So hopefully that'll help with the BCs. The battle cruisers should not have been as good as they were. 
they were upgraded so late but the marines they need the upgrade lead to actually kill them the good news the good news is that low clock is actually going to build his own battle cruisers and if there's one thing that we know it's that he's he's been in cahoots with the iron bank he's got better upgrades he's got better units he's got a huge bank his bcs are already 3-3 Malzahar still has not even started 3-3 for his battle cruisers. So for all intents and purposes, there's this 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 is like the ideal scenario for low clock. He's been in this like really slow, horribly painful grind up the game. And I, I mean really grind up. Like just just churning. He's, he's churning butter. He's churning butter for 20 hours straight. Because the quarter ends next week and they're two shipments behind. It's it's not easy. It's not easy being this dude playing versus a man who's building nothing but battle cruisers. Is that a Thor? Malzahar getting a Thor? Okay, well, don't know how that fits into the picture, but okay. He does start three three. Now, turret range and building armor for a low clock are coming in. Those are going to help quite a bit. Battle cruisers are coming in. Looks like Malzahar wants a fight. Throws a bunch of Yamatos, but it's not enough to kill the command center and he teleports back. That's a pretty rough loss. Quite a few, quite a few units get picked off there. We've got SCVs fighting turrets, ladies and gentlemen. The man in the turret. The man in the turret's got bottles of Ciroc thrown in his windows. Oh, this one gets to live. He's cool. He's cool. He's on the list. He's on the list? Okay. Whew. Repositioning now to the southwest. 3-3 three, three on the way. This is one of those games you just want to skip to the end. Yeah, yeah, no. This one this one was pretty brutal. This was this was pretty bad. I'm not gonna lie. It was a little bit painful. But it is one of two games I played off stream, so I just figured somebody out there in this dark, twisted world might find this humorous or interesting in some way. Uh, my opponent, I think, has been Grandmaster on the European server. So, I mean, if you've got complaints, I'm going to be real with you. I blame this guy because there's no way I should have won. And there's absolute... Well, I, I don't know if I won yet. But there's absolutely no way I should... That Malzahar should have been allowed back into this game by any means. And this game would not have been as painfully long if LeClock simply hadn't broken Malzahar's kneecaps at the seven minute mark. So that, that's all I have to say. All Low Clock had to do was just not break my legs at the start of the match. And I wouldn't have had to spend 20 minutes clawing it back, okay? That's all. That's all I'm saying. He did a lot of damage, but couldn't close it out. I, again, I think that this game still mostly boils down to 3-3. Three, 3-3 three. Three, three is coming in at like the 20, the 23, 22 minute mark. Some of those fights earlier where the where the Marines jumped the battle cruisers, if he was 3-3 three, three versus the 1-1 one, one or the unupgraded BCs, I think he I think he destroys them before Mouse can even react. We've got some long distance mining on gas going on here. This is great. This is great. If you're wondering what's going through my mind, it's uh this guy has a crazy amount of Vikings, and I don't think I can move out on the map. He's got 25 Vikings, seven battle cruisers, and seven ravens. Got some nice Yamatos going down too. I thought the SCV counterattack was worth it. So what actually happens here is he clicks to teleport all of them, but there's no space. So three go up in advance of everything else. But look at this battle. Tell me this ain't cinematic AF. It's beautiful. Repair mules coming down. 19 battle cruisers. It doesn't get much better than that, baby. Now the battle cruisers, I think, still don't have three three, or they do. They all, they both have three three. Battle cruisers take a long time to kill each other. That's really all you need to know. So it took a huge amount of damage from that early attack, and then kind of just taking advantage of not having upgrades was able to was able to make something of that. So I hope you enjoyed this game. Just uh, just some cheeky off stream StarCraft matches I've been playing as uh, my, my passion has has been reignited as of late so i've just been having some fun with it so hopefully i'll be able to bring you some better games in the future but uh, i only i only played a couple i only played a couple so this is this is what you get 
I love you guys. Uh, see you next time.